But think about it as an athlete. Imagine if you trained every single day as hard as you could possibly train for any sport and you never actually got to play a game. You'd be a crazy person, right, if you never got to actually play. And so we train for war. And it's by no means a game, but we knew that our phone was going to be ringing once these events unfolded. And little did we know how quickly they, unfold, they, they called, but they called. And so my team, within 48 hours, reconstituted to Roosevelt Roads, Puerto Rico. We have a huge airfield there. The base is closed now. But we started getting ready for whatever was to come. We started packing what's called our war bags. Okay? So you pack a bag for mountain warfare. You pack a bag for jungle warfare. You pack a bag for desert terrain, maritime assault, all the different missions that the, that the president could basically call us to go execute so you're ready to go when that phone call comes. Everything you do in the SEAL teams is with a buddy. And my shooting buddy, we're packing together. His nickname is Jersey because he grew up in sight of those towers. But I'll never forget what he said to me as we're packing our war bags. He says to me, Big D, I'll tell you what. I cannot wait to go take revenge on whoever did this. I can't wait to go get some payback and take revenge. And you know those words in your life that you hear or those moments in life when you smell something or you see something and it brings you back to a memory, brings you back to a teaching point? I see heads nodding. I feel like everybody's had this experience. Well, this did, and it's special to share this tonight. I'll get emotional thinking about it, but it brought me back to Syracuse. And so my freshman year, we played Princeton in the final four, right? And the year prior, when I was a senior, I wasn't even at Syracuse, Princeton had beat Syracuse in double overtime in this thriller. And so everybody on the field knew that a year prior, Princeton had beat Syracuse in the most important game of the year. And so here we were playing them on a Saturday. And so we, we win the game. We go on to play for the championship on Monday. But remember, after the game, a reporter interviews, interviews Coach Roy Simmons. I think you might have heard of that name. So... Coach Simmons is talking to this reporter, and whenever he was talking, I was listening. So most of the team had left, left to go to the locker room, and I stuck around. I was off camera, not by far, but he was such a motivator and a mentor that I wanted to hear what he had to say. And I remember this por reporter puts a microphone in front of Coach's face and says, Coach, boy, it must be unbelievable to hear a year later come back and take revenge on Princeton. And Coach, without the slightest bit of malice, just says very calmly and coolly to the reporter, we don't use words like revenge at Syracuse. And so I hear this, and now, years later, I'm about to launch on campaign and go chase our nation's enemies, and my buddy says, man, I can't wait to get revenge. It brings me back to that teaching point. And I knew as an officer that there was no way I could kind of dictate and drive our, our tactical elements energies with revenge as my fuel that that would be a corrupt way to do my job, that, that, I, that I had to you know, hold a higher standard for myself and my team as a leader. You see, that's what was special about Coach. The funny thing is, as, as legendary as Coach Simmons is, I don't remember him teaching me a thing about lacrosse. <laughs> I don't. He might be here tonight. I, I, hope he, I sort of hope he hears that, and I, I sort of hope he doesn't because his nickname's Slugger and that didn't come by accident. <laughs> but he, I, I don't remember him coaching me in lacrosse. I remember him coaching me in life. I remember him telling us how to take care of one another, how to work harder in preseason so we were ready for the postseason. He convinced everyone on that team that we were a bunch of thoroughbred horses that could run harder and faster than anybody else when it came playoff time. And, and I don't think we ran harder than other teams. I just think we believed it because he said it. He had us have a complete disdain for mediocrity. And, and this is what coaches do, right? I get emotional when I think about it because it's so special. And there's so many people that are in this room charged with that very task. My point in sharing this story is to be mentors. Be mentors. That's what coaches are. And so I know you're doing it on the field. Do it beyond the field. Do it in a church group. Do it in a little soccer league or, or a little lacrosse league for, 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 for kids to bring them up in the game. Be mentors. I feel like we're in big trouble if everyone is not mentoring, particularly young folks, to get to a great conclusion. Coach planted that seed for me decades early for when it flowered at the most opportune time. Be mentors.